sometimes the only thing we can do is keep moving, just going on, putting one foot in front of the other because it's dreadful, because it's not easy, because it's... I've been through one of those times and seasons in my life with a deep depression, deep clinical depression, and I was lost, my friends. It was just like frozen in myself, and thank God there were some people to help me in and through that. So sometimes it's just... All we can do is go through the motions. Just make it one day at a time. So what do we need right then? Well, from the help outside, definitely. And there are people in helping professions and medications and whatever it takes. We need that part. But also what I've experienced with one of my professionals is how he helped me reconnect to the fire to my own soul. It felt almost like I lost my soul, my energy, I was drained, I was just done. And he, in caring with me and for me, helped me reconnect to the fire, the energy, the soul. And I think that's a little bit what each and every one of us needs, whether we're deep down or whether we're just going through the ordinary life, routine, autopilot, no big difference, same old, same old, just making it through the day, through the week, through the month, through the year. What we need is, and that's what Pentecost is about, to reconnect to the fire the energy, the spirit, the soul that is there and flowing in us and through us. So that's what we need and what I think deep down in our hearts we're all longing for. On Friday night, together with many others, I was at the graduation of the Seelings Grove High School students. What accomplished young people were there. It's just, I was in awe and wonder, feeling like applauding each one of them. But one of them stood out, Julian. Julian has cerebral palsy. And when he was trying to walk up those stairs to the podium, he had to hold on to the rail. It was not easy for him. He struggled. And then he had his diploma. And when he was on stage, he held it high in a show of victory, of spirit, of energy, of life energy. Now, was he the most academically astute student? No, that doesn't matter. There was spirit, fire, energy in him. And you could see it in his face. And you could hear it from the roaring applause. Fire, energy, spirit being raised up and cheered up and lifted up. Julian did it for the crowd. And the crowd did it for Julian. And it was contagious. Holy moments. Talk about it. At Sealands Grove Graduation High School on Friday. And talking about spirit and energy and fire, we need both. We need the water. And Kristen will be baptized today with water. And then we need the fire, and the similarity between water and fire is they're both fluid, they're movement. So you think of John the Baptist came to be baptizing us with water. And he says, Jesus, 
is to do with spirit and fire. So we need both. We need the water, the flowing energy. And when you looked at the pictures of our confirmants, did you see the green in them? Did you see the trees? Did you see the life energy, the life force in the stream of life, the water of life that flows there? And as with a good tree, it needs to be grounded, deeply grounded and rooted in the soil to draw those nutrients with the water, with the energy. And then the tree also needs the fire, the sun rays, the opening up for it to just crown, the crown of the tree to unfold. So just like a tree, we need the grounding, the connection to the water of life, and we need the openness to the sun, to the spirit, to fill our hearts. That's the vertical connection. That's the vertical connection of the cross of Jesus, connected to the water of life and opening heaven up to the glory of the living God. And then, yes, we need that too. A hand to hold on to, someone to hug us, someone to be with us, that we're in community, that no one stands alone. One of my colleagues said, when it comes to guests to the church, people who are new, people who are interested in membership and all, takes two things. One is give them a friend and give them a job. Don't we all need that? We need someone to stand with us, someone to be with us on the journey of life. No one can make it alone, and we're not meant to make it alone. We need each other. We're meant to be together, to have someone hold us, to be walking with us. And no matter which relationships, doesn't matter, but we need the connection, and we need a task. We need something to do to share ourselves, because with that, something comes back when we lean in, when we share one of our talents, when we are engaged, involved, makes a huge difference because always something comes back. So we need a friend, we need a job. And those new members, they had an opportunity to choose where and how do I want to participate. And that very same friend colleague said, one of his roles is to help people transition from bib to apron, from being spoon-fed to roll up your sleeves and do something, get involved. Now, I think it's not just about the transition from bib to apron, I think we need both. I think there are times when we need to be fed and nurtured and nourished by the Spirit of God, by relationships. I think that bib is there because at times we're all children. We all need to be fed. Our souls need to be fed too. And then yes, we also need an apron, a bib and an apron. How will you serve? 